Hello again everybody. Um, what I thought I'd talk about today um, is what you're going to have very soon, which is a new colony. Um, but before I do, um, I, I took this footage and I'll, I'll talk about why this is relevant, why I'm talking about the flowers today I in a second, but I took this footage of a newly enclosed um, Laceus flavus callow worker. Um, she's obviously in the centre shot, hanging upside down on the glass, and they are just so pale and see-through, even compared to the Laceus niger callows. You can just tell she's she's a brand new worker, just probably a close that day that I was filming. And as you can see, they are just so cute because, yeah, just how see-through they are, and she's absolutely lovely. Um, I also in this um, video caught a lot of. Um, quite close up shots of tropolaxis going on um, which are quite interesting as well. But anyway, yeah, what I wanted to talk about, I wanted to talk about what you're actually keeping. Um, people say, yeah, I'm keeping ants. Um, you're actually not. <laughs> what you are keeping is a colony of ants. And you must start to think about these ants as almost just one thing. It's one creature, a colony of ants. They communicate constantly with each other as I've shown in other videos. And, and that constant interaction between the workers operates in a, a similar or a way a bit like let's say a brain works in that it fires neurons around within the brain. And, and that's how um, an animal or a person thinks. So you can almost say um, that an ant colony is like a, an intelligence within itself. And this is where the, the term hive mind comes from. And there's still debate within scientific circles about exactly what is or how intelligent or is this hive mind. But, but there's no doubting that your, your colony will alter and change its behaviour as it gets more members. And it basically it becomes a lot more grown up. Um, it reacts to things a lot quicker, it uh, finds food a lot quicker, it moves food back to the nest a lot quicker, it, it, rea it um, is able to cope with adverse things like perhaps a, a, a lack of food a lot better because it's got bigger storage capacity amongst all of the ants in the colony. Um, and it, it resists shocks like, you know, maybe a, an individual ant drowning in syrup or something as I showed in my rescue mission. It, it becomes irrelevant to a big colony. But when you first get your first little crop of nanitics, they are still, and the colony is still, so fragile. You must treat, like I said, you must think of your colony as the actual thing that you're keeping. And when you first have workers, it's like having a baby kitten or a puppy or something. They are still really infant. Even though the ants are now ants, because the colony is so small, it's still in the sort of very early days of, of its ability to react and think, think's perhaps the wrong word, but its ability to interact and, and make reaction decisions. And so you have to treat your new colony with really kid gloves. You have to treat them ever so softly, ever so gently. And this is a, a another common mistake that I see new ant keepers making is that as soon as they've got a few workers, they're like, yeah, there we go, we've got a colony, bang. And they're wanting to move them into big nests, they're wanting to let them go into this or do that with them. You know, they, they immediately want to start with the main parts of ant keeping with a very, very small, very early colony. And what you need to do with a very small, very early colony is yes, obviously feed them, but feed them tiny little amounts, little amounts tiny but more often perhaps you know don't feed them once a week when they're a new colony feed them every couple of days but the, the, the tiniest amount each time so that you're not overwhelming them and you still need to be mindful of things like knocking them 
making them do things that they're not comfortable with, like moving out of their test tube. They really don't want to. They are happy in there as a new colony, and they still feel fragile and afraid. They feel that the queen is still vulnerable. And very often I see posts again where people will take the um, cotton wool out of the end of their test tube, which is a very bad thing to do anyway. If you are going to take the wool out, the bung out the end, you need to make a smaller entrance. Um, we'll talk about that in another video. But they'll take the cotton wool completely out, completely open the test tube up, stick the test tube in some sort of outworld or in some sort of box, and then ask questions like, why are my ants not coming out? Why are they not going into the outworld and feeding? Why are they all up the end of the tube clustered together? It's because you've done that. They're still, they're, they're more terrified of predators or something coming to get them than they are about worried about going out. And you've just ripped the security gate off the front of their very fragile brand new nest. Um, yeah, look at this tropal axis here. You, there's an enormous drop that one is transferring to the other. I was really shocked to see this. It's quite um, remarkable footage. Um, but yeah, the reason I wanted to show the flavus is uh, um, the other thing I want to say is those nanitics, those first ants that come out, will start to die next spring. So you need to have your second wave coming along to support the colony and allow it to grow. And I had some issues with the flavus. Um, uh, I had to move them out the test tube. I had I had escapes and I couldn't catch them all. And I couldn't get them back in and I had to put them into an outworld. And oh, it just it was, yeah. And so I had to put them into this nest too early, really, and they didn't like it. They dropped down to five workers. That's how close it was. But luckily, as you can see, I think they're fully back now. There's about 28, 29. And, yeah, I think they're now fully on the road to growth and um, they'll be all right. But I was very worried about them for a little while um, in the spring. So yeah, I'm just trying to re-emphasize that message that even though very soon you're going to have some worker ants and you're going to have the start of a colony, you still need to take things slowly, treat them very carefully and not rush them into things that they're not ready to do because the colony's not big enough. And as I've said before, hibernation is coming up shortly um, in the end of October. So if you do have plans and you want to be thinking about next year, what I'd say to you is think about this for next year, right? Christmas will be in the middle of hibernation. If you want to be asking for presents or getting things for Christmas, that's the time to then start to think about your nests, to think about your outworlds, to think about the setup for next year. And yeah, next year you're going to start on what? 20, 30 ants maybe at the start of the year and by the end of the year you could be on 800 to 1000 ants. So next year is going to be your growth year and by the end of next year when you're putting them into the hibernation in 2022 that is when you will have an ant colony, a full colony that's mature and you can start to do the things that you want to do with it. So don't run before you can walk. Thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.